But uh, some of the older kids are back to school and certainly by the, and the younger ones are of course today as well, right throughout the primary sector. Uh, all the primary school pupils are back and those in the years 12 to 14 uh, heading back as well. But by, by ne- the point is after Easter, everyone's going to be back in school. So uh, what sort of additional pressures are especially the older children under? I want to speak to Dr. John McMullen, who's an educational uh, psychologist. Uh, John, this sort of hokey-cokey approach to school over the last uh, 12 months, what impact does that have on children emotionally? Morning, Frank. Um, Yes, I think uh, the evidence is showing it has had an impact and not just on the, on the older kids like you mentioned there but across at every educational stage um, obviously it's important to say that every child is different and every child will have experienced school closures and lockdown uh, differently some kids have thrived but uh, the evidence is showing that um, for the majority um, that it has had an impact on their uh, mental health and well-being we have a, a quite a large parent study, um, parent and care study on homeschooling that we'll be releasing this week um, from Stramalis University College that is. We had over 2,000 parents responded to that and uh, 51% of parents um, said that uh, school closures had, had had made their children's mental health and well-being worse or much worse. Only 7% said better or much better and the rest had no change. And, uh, and that was kind of similar for other questions we asked about physical health, motivation, behaviour, social skills. The majority of parents and carers find that uh, lockdown and um, school closures have had a negative impact on those. And on parent mental health and wellbeing too, 80% of parents, that's 1,600 parents reported a negative or very negative impact on their own mental health and wellbeing, which may not come as a great surprise to a lot of your listeners. Why... Are the children so stressed? Is it because they've been taken away from the routine? They they set out when they went to school to go to school for, you know, 12 or 14 years and they expected to be able to go at certain times and be off at certain times. That routine has been well and truly impinged upon. Or is it that it is so important for them to constantly have interaction with their peer group, that when you take that away and you're only knocking around with a couple of neighbours and your your brothers or sisters, that you're, you're well and truly disadvantaged. Do, do we need to be, do, do the people, children of that age need to be in a much bigger herd? I think you've hit the nail on the head there, um, Frank. And the, the most common thread that's, that's running through the, the lived experiences of children is, is loss. Um, sometimes we think of loss and bereavement as um, you know losing a person, and, and for some kids that has been the case. But l- there's also been the loss of routine, like you say, that structure that for kids all, they've known their whole lives, the daily structure of school, um, and even the, the rules and the, the routine that helps um, children, especially in the younger years, feel safe. But then you have the friendships <clears throat> and the social interaction, and we know that um, as human beings that um, the, the, the most difficult things that we encounter involve relational loss. Um, the most traumatic events, and for some kids, not for all, but for some kids it has been experienced as a trauma, um, involve relational loss. And because of that, recovery has to involve re- re-establishing those human connections. That, that needs to come first, and that can happen. Um, and I'm saying this as, as a psychologist, it often happens outside of, of therapy and counselling. It happens in the normality and in the structure of daily life inside homes and communities and schools. And I think that's why it's so important that um, the kids are starting to come back to school, a lot of them this week, um, and um, as soon as they can get back into those normal structures and routines, with a focus on well-being and a focus on reconnection, I think in most kids... And that will be enough. Yeah, will that be enough? Will it correct itself as opposed to needing to have a- experts on hand to monitor them <clears throat> going into next year? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a bit of debate around that. Um, my personal view is that all kids have experienced some kind of loss. Um, some will, I think all will maybe need a little bit extra when they come back. I think that makes sense. But some will need more extra than others. And what is really clear is that lockdown has exacerbated disadvantage, it's exacerbated inequality. As someone said, we've all been through the same storm, but some are in yachts and some are in dinghies. So I think for some kids, 
getting back to the structure, the routine, reconnecting with their teachers, uh, with their friends again. Um, that will be enough with well-being support from the school as well. For others, they will need additional support long term. Some kids are going to need counselling and therapeutic support. There's no doubt about that to prevent more severe mental health issues down the line. And all of that needs funding. We need funding for well-being, whole school uh, support and well-being, but we also need additional um, therapeutic support and uh, more accessibility and easier accessibility to be able to get um, that support for, for those minority children that will need additional support. Yeah, and of course, they just haven't missed out on school. They've missed out on what we used to call their discos, their youth clubs, their football teams, their swimming yeah. galas. They, they've they missed out on everything that makes being a teenager good fun. And we have to keep that in, in we have to keep that in mind. I compared it back during the lockdown to the troubles. And I, you know, I was a child of the troubles. You might have been a child of the troubles. There were definite disadvantages of growing up in the troubles, but we also had freedoms that the kids of today don't have. And they've now been restricted for a year. So we, we have to have sympathy for them. Yeah. And that's another loss, the loss of freedom. In the loss of academic opportunity. I know there's a lot of debate around the exams, but we can't assume for all kids that exams being cancelled is, is, is a great thing. For some, it's something they've worked really hard for, and that was a loss too. But yes, the sports clubs, the societies, kids need to play with kids their own age. I have a, a three-year-old who is so delighted to get back to nursery as much as we try to replicate those play experiences. She needs to play with other three-year-olds. Same for primary age kids. The teenagers need their, their parties, <laughs> they need to be able to develop and grow and do all the things that teenagers do. And hopefully we're starting to see the point now when they will be able to do that again and um, those freedoms will be that they had to give up really to protect um, their elderly relatives. Um, hopefully now we'll be able to see that um, these things, as soon as safely possible, they'll be able to get started back to their sports clubs and their dance and their drama and their arts and their craft and all those extracurricular activities that make school what it is and make life what it is, really. And, and just finally, it's a little easier for the primary school age, is that fair to say, than it is for the 13, 14, 15s? Actually, um, in our in our study, we didn't find that. Um, when parent, we, we didn't speak to the kids directly, which is what is really needed as well. But we talked about parents to ask about um, their children's difficulties and those stats that I mentioned earlier were across every educational stage but actually they seem to be even more significant for primary age kids and parents seem to think that it had affected uh, their mental health and well-being and maybe even slightly more um, and that may be associated with around the P6, P7 age with all the tobacco around the transfer test. And also parents of kids in special schools. Um, as we know, the special schools have remained open, but um, obviously there's been a huge additional challenge for those kids that are already uh, more vulnerable. Yeah, let's keep in mind that it's been tough for every child the whole way through the system the last yeah. 12 months. Important research. Uh, uh, John, thank you indeed. Uh, all the team at, at Stromalus working working on that. Dr John McMullen, educational psychologist, with us here on the U105 phone-in. Is there anything you'd like to <clears throat> add to the commentary from John or you want to share your experiences? You can lift the phone, you can give us a ring, 02890 And how much of a deal is getting them all back to school for you? you-